So we've got another mini PC to take a look at on this channel, and this one is really impressive. It's cheap as all heck. It's probably one of the cheaper mini PCs that I've taken a look at on the channel. So this is the Geekom Mini Air 11, and currently on Amazon, it's going for $129. That could change in the future. I'm just going by what I'm seeing now. At $129, this thing is fairly impressive. We're gonna be uh, testing it out with some retro gaming, little bit of PC gaming, we'll touch on that. But I, I was uh, pleasantly surprised here with what this thing is capable of doing because you know I've compared this to the Raspberry Pi 4. And you know, getting a Pi 4 completely going, buying storage for it, a micro SD card, power supply, a case, all that kind of stuff, you're pretty much in this territory if you can get all that stuff for retail, mind you. You're in this territory. If you buy a kit on Amazon of a Pi 4, uh, you're paying more than what this mini PC costs. Kind of crazy. And this mini PC is a fair bit more capable than a Pi 4 with all the retro games that we could play here. So the Mini Air 11 from Geekom, it is powered by an Intel Celeron processor, the uh, N5095 chip. Yeah, so it's a 11th gen processor. Uh, it's got four cores, four threads, up to 2.9 gigahertz. So I did do a little quick teardown on this thing and it's, it's a budget PC, you gotta keep that in mind. This thing, it only has a 256 gigabyte SSD. It is replaceable, you can you know upgrade if you want. And then the nice thing that I really like with this, man, there's so, it's got a decent amount of inputs and outputs, right? Uh, but it has a SD card slot on the side. I, I dig that, I dig that. Now, when I opened it up and I looked at the RAM, it only has a single stick of eight gigabyte, uh, you know, an eight gigabyte RAM stick. Uh, it would be nice to have, you know, dual channel RAM here, even if they just, hey, a four gig and a four gig, that would have been fine. I don't know how uh, widely available those are nowadays, but um, you can upgrade if you want, buy another eight gig stick or, you know, upgrade even further to 16 gigs. Definitely would help this uh, uh, quite a bit, I think. But let's go ahead and um, take a look at some gameplay here. So I'm gonna, you know, run through some retro games, kind of build up from the low, to the highest end that I was able to play reliably on this system. Um, but before we get into that, PC gaming, uh, you know, with this processor, with everything that we got here, yes, you can play some PC games. The latest AAA games, probably not. But some indie games, some older stuff, sure, why not? But you gotta keep your expectations in check. This thing is not gonna run even like, you know, Grand Theft Auto V, unless maybe you're running at like, 200p resolution or something i don't know but let's get into the retro games real quick so okay the basic stuff your 8 and 16 bit systems and all your handhelds you know all the way from atari nes super nintendo sega genesis you're gonna have no issues with that stuff at all it shouldn't be surprising this is the same kind of stuff that's gonna run on a raspberry pi no problem but like I said earlier, this system is a fair bit more capable. So, you know, moving past all that, I did test like 32X uh, Sega CD, Neo Geo. You're gonna have no issues with any of that stuff. But going further than that, right? Going a little bit further, I did start to notice because I was using two different builds on this PC, a Batocera build and then a CoinOps build. And I think it's just, you know, because Batocera, you're running the, its own operating system, you know, Linux stuff and whatnot, that maybe there's some driver issues and, and, you know, stuff like that with this system. But certain consoles wouldn't run very well, but running them through CoinOps through Windows 11 ran, like, very well. So we'll get into more of that in a moment here. Those alien bastards are gonna pay for shooting up my ride. So moving forward a little bit, Sega Saturn and Nintendo 64, I tested a fair bit of games here and not a single one of them seemed to give me any issues. I did put particular attention on Sega Saturn and yeah, it was pretty cool seeing all these different games running on this cheap PC, right? So that was definitely cool. Nintendo 64, same thing, everything ran fine. Uh, you know, I was using these preset up builds where I didn't tweak any emulator settings. But for sure, you know, depending on how you have things set up, you know, different cores that you're using, options and whatnot will affect performance. But hey, just tossing these builds on this PC and running things, so far so good. Ichimashi, 
So real quick with Naomi and Dreamcast, both of these systems seem to run just fine as far as you know performance-wise goes. Uh, didn't have too much of an issue. I did notice in like House of the Dead 2 on the Dreamcast, uh, a few graphics glitches that I don't remember being in the original game. But as far as performance went, there really didn't seem to be any issues. So yeah, Dreamcast Naomi appears to be fine on this PC. So finally moving on to uh, GameCube and Wii. So GameCube was one where I was a little hesitant. I was like, I don't think this is gonna work because initially this is where my problem with Battle Sera came into play where I was booting up GameCube games through that and they just either would crash or they would run like two FPS, like they were just not playable. So that's when I had the idea, wait a minute, there may be an issue here with drivers and stuff like that. Let me just boot these games through you know, coin ops on Windows 11. And that's when I noticed, hey, GameCube games, everything that I tested, I didn't really see an issue. I can't guarantee that everything will play perfectly fine, but everything that I played and threw at this system with these consoles was running great. So yeah, I was pleasantly surprised with GameCube, really had no issues with that. Uh, but moving on to Wii, uh, I really wasn't having much luck with Wii at all. Like the new Super Mario Brothers game, um, barely, I wouldn't even consider it playable, but it's it's borderline, it's almost playable. But anything beyond that, it was just choppy, you know. I did start to mess around with a few settings that could possibly improve performance, but I really wasn't seeing it. So I almost forgot to talk about PSP, so I'm gonna throw some footage up for that right now, but I played a few games with PSP. God of War, holy crap, looked and played amazing. So that's definitely cool. So, you know, to kind of finish up this video, wrap things up, uh, this is a cool little mini PC. You know, you got Windows 11 Pro installed on here. Uh, you could be doing some documents, some spreadsheets, streaming movies, playing retro games. So this is something I definitely recommend for somebody who's looking for a small form factor device to load up retro games on and then just have that added benefit that, hey, it is actually a Windows PC and there's a lot more you could do with it. You know, if you're somebody like I've been talking about the Raspberry Pi 4 lately and the price point, it's just, you know, comparing the two, this cheap PC versus that, this is far more capable and this is what I would recommend uh, download a build, one of these coin ops builds, throw it on there and just get gaming. So if you're interested, there's a link down below, coupon code that the company provided, save a few bucks. But yeah, appreciate you guys for watching, hanging out with me. Catch you on the next one. Bye.